Hey everyone, so we're going to look at the JIT op object today. Uh, and the op and that what we're talking about is uh, mathematical operators. So JIT op is basically an object that allows us to compare and uh, contrast, I guess, like enact mathematical operations against two matrices or one value against multiple matrices. Um, and like really simply, just to give you a sense, of it, if I go at op and I choose a mathematical operator, and that can be anything like plus, minus, uh, multiply, divide, I can calculate the absolute difference. Um, and I'll show you all the other ones. It's kind of easy to bring them up, but like just uh, to give you a sense right away, if I do jit op uh, plus, and uh, let's say just bring a camera into here, the jit grab object and oh, sorry, open and then we'll get a Q Metro going here so that we can uh, see each frame of the camera 33 that'll give us 30 frames a second and then uh, whatever is coming into the first inlet here all the different pixel values in the matrix we can add to it based on what's coming in here. And we could do that with another matrix. So uh, let's make a JIT noise. Uh, we'll do four char, and we have four planes of information, char is the data representation, we'll do 1280 by 720. Uh, and I'll get a bang here, because you only need one frame for this. And I'll get the JIT P window here. Make it a little bigger. And you can see that I've added all this random noise value to the image. I could keep, bang uh, keep banging it and it would be almost like I'm adding it into that. Um, and this really comes down kind of a way of like mixing two images is like probably how you're going to end up using it. Um, I guess I could also go in, I could subtract each of these pixel values. So you get something a little darker, and that should make a, a sense, you know, like you add to each pixel value what's coming into here, plane by plane, and the image would start to get brighter or lighter. If you subtract it, it would start to get darker. It's getting closer to a zero pixel value. Um, but let's uh, let's get rid of this for a second, like really just granularly granularly look at what's happening under the hood. So I'll, I'll change it down to one plane, uh, and I'll make it like two by two. And I'll make another one that's the exact same. I'll make a trigger object. I'll send two bangs. This is just because I want to make sure the order of operations is correct. Uh, so this one will come out first, and this one will come out second. Um, so when I send a bang here, it's saying trigger everything and the, every argument I give it. So bang will come out of here. Bang will come out of here. Um, I'll make some smaller JIT windows. And so let's see, like, it, it, visually it makes a little bit of sense so far what's happening. I have a pixel right here that I'm going to guess is about a value of like 210. Uh, based on how light it is out of 255. And this pixel right here is probably about, oh, 70. And I'm subtracting the value of this pixel from this pixel, which is why I end up with something that's kind of in between. It's probably like 200 minus 70. So this pixel value is about 130. Um, and if I bring up that cell block object, And I'll resize them. I only need four pixels. And let's see, we have um, 128 is this pixel. 
and 37 is this pixel, and the resulting pixel is 91, and if I bring out a calculator, 127 minus 37 equals 90. So there's like a rounding error there, but like essentially that's correct. Um, this one, 97 minus 108, since zero is our minimum, it'll just reset to zero and we have these black pixels here. Um, so yeah, a, a lot of times, if you do this on like a movie or a camera image, you have to think like, not only is it plane by plane, pixel by pixel, and it becomes more of a visual effect than it becomes something that we can like kind of wrap our head around, but like basically we're just doing math on these pixels, like this compare, zero, zero compares to zero, zero here, and this is the operator that compares the two, and we get the result there. Um, one thing, though, like, the plus and minus make sense, obviously, I hope. Uh, but when I multiply, you probably end up thinking you're going to get all white pixels, and you're going to get a number that, like, if I took 17 and multiplied 200, two, uh, 229, I'm going to get something that's, like, almost 3,000, 4,000. Um... But when I do this, I, I don't. I get this weird number like 169 times 167 equals 110. And that, that doesn't seem to make very much sense at first. But that's just because when we're using char data, we're representing the minimum and the maximum as a value between 0 and 255. And when we use float32 data, we're representing the minimum and the maximum as uh, 0, 0.0 to 1.0 as a float number. And we don't, it, it's going to cap out at 255, but that 255 is actually kind of representational of this 0. 0.0 to 1.0. Um, so what it's actually doing is it's actually looking at what is... Uh, a hundred and six, what percentage of 167 is, uh, oh sorry, what percentage of 255 is 167? Um, so I can go to the calculator like that, and I can say 167 divided by 255, and that value is 0 0.65, da 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 da. Uh, and so what we're saying with 167 in this, like, is representation is it's 65% of a maximum pixel value. What I'm actually doing is I'm taking that number and I'm multiplying it by this. So, and I'm gonna, it's not going to be this whole thing, so I'll just do 0.65 times 169, and I get 109.85, which you can see is rounded up is essentially that right here. So we just it's if we wanted something like 169 times 167, we could I believe we could do long data. And long data is just a way of saying uh, I just want you to represent integers and numbers. And I don't you, your maximum number value is in the 300 million or something. Um, zero to ridiculously ridiculously large number. Let's see, I'm not sure the noise object can do long data, but let's find out. And it can, and what's interesting is, you know, it's not constrained, so when we actually get a random value from noise, it's this just massive number. Um, and I think the pixels, I, I'm, I'm actually not sure how the pixels are represented as these, as these values, this long data. Um, but then we get something that's probably closer to this uh, idea of how we're multiplying things. But you don't need to worry too I, I'm throwing this at you because I, you know, there's like computer vision reasons or data storage reasons that like this is interesting to know and good to know. But what we're really concerned about the, a lot of this basis of using mathematical operators and comparing two images is kind of how a lot of Photoshop filters work. They're probably a little more nuanced than this, but you could build them up from all this math and you could write like algorithmic expressions. Um, but you just kind of also get cool effects. Uh, so if I go back to JIT-OP 
and I can just open the help and I can copy paste this U menu that has every single operator in here I'll do message op dollar sign one and we're going to take the middle inlet because that'll give us the actual string coming out of it and maybe I'll do a JIP movie and I'll just hook up the same Q Metro that'll keep them in sync And I can add them, and you can see the pixel values become extremely blown out. They're adding up to maximum values that are white as a pixel value. Uh, I could subtract them. Same idea. It's probably getting a little bit darker. And when I multiply, it's a little bit, it's almost kind of like that X-Fade object, where it's like doing a good job of kind of just bringing both images together. Divide, it looks like it just completely disappears. This plus M one, I honestly don't even know what plus M means mathematically. I do know that it just gets some nice kind of like uh, color wrapping effects on it. Um, modulo is always an interesting one. Again, there's kind of a nice color wrapping effect. Uh, absolute difference, you get kind of like a solarizer effect and whatnot. Um, max, only show the maximum, uh, the highest value pixel. Min is the opposite of that. Um, once you get over into here, yeah, I've noticed they don't tend to do much. You know, you can explore on your own. Uh, these ones are pretty, you can have stuff going on. But I guess what I'm getting at is like, even without understanding the math of what's happening here, you do get these kind of interesting effects and interesting blending options. And you have kind of like these different choices right here, like how you want to explore that. So that's just something that you can play with and explore. Um... There's like two last things I'd like to point out about this. One is, I just get rid of this movie for a second. I have just the JIT grab object here. You can also just feed a single value into the JIT op object here. So I could do an integer. And it'll just compare every single one of these pixels against that individual value. Uh, for plus, that might make sense. There we go. So I'm adding 0 to each pixel. Now I can add 20 to each pixel, and 70, and 120, and 160. And the image is getting brighter. So I'm just adding 160 to each pixel. And as that value rises, it means the image gets brighter or whiter, or the value gets closer to 255. Um, same with subtract. And now it gets darker. Uh, one thing that's kind of fun, though, is like, when you use these uh, greater than, less than ones, we actually end up, it returns each pixel as a binary telling us if it's true or not. And true being a representation of uh, a white pixel and false being a representation of a black pixel. Um, with a color image, it doesn't make a lot of sense right away what's happening. But if I convert this to RGB to Luma, which just basically makes a grayscale image and it's a one plane image, now, it's looking at every single pixel in my image, and it's saying, is that pixel value greater than 150? And if it is greater than 150, it just returns a white pixel. And if it's less than 150, it returns a black pixel. So it becomes a binary image, and it tells me if that's true or not. Um, so you can get this kind of sweeping effect as you go through and you can compare each pixel against a value for how bright it is. The other thing you can do, um, this is, it's kind of cool. We're going to look at it more with the JIT Luma key where it makes more sense why this is a cool visual effect. Um, you can do this trick with video feedback 
uh, where you take, you know, like what, what I hook up into here, what I'm comparing it against, could also be the output of what is coming out of here, so that the image would constantly compare against itself. Uh, you can see, though, right away, I can't grab this and hook it up right here. It, you can't hook an object's output up to its input. But you can do it really simply by, I'm just making a JIT matrix object. And if you make a JIT matrix object with no arguments, it'll just adapt to whatever it's receiving. Uh, so basically, it just becomes kind of a pass-through object. It's uh, going to come out of here the exact same as it entered. But once I have that in here, I'm going to get rid of the JIT RGB to Luma just because there's some interesting color effects you'll see. Um, once I have it going into this object, then I can hook it up. And you can see the image just got progressively darker and progressively darker. Uh, but if I try something like this, whoa, it's constantly adding in on itself um, to the point where it becomes almost like just complete noise, complete mess. Uh, and every time I change it, though, it, it might reset. Let's see. And the, the plus one again makes the most sense. Like we're adding the we're we're adding the image to itself, adding the image to itself, adding the image to itself, and it becomes this feedback loop that we can't escape, where it just gets brighter and brighter and brighter until we have a completely white image. Um, this one's a, interesting though. But it, this actually becomes almost like an effect that we can use because it's not. It leaves kind of a trail of information behind it. We can see the outline of the head. Um, so yeah, that's, those are just kind of all the tricks you can do with JIT op. Uh, again, it might not be, uh, pain, it might not be that, uh, apparent why this is an interesting object at the moment. Uh, one of the reasons it's a really interesting object is we kind of have to go back to just realizing that JIT matrices are just data storage, data containers. They don't have to always, be, you can represent it as an image. But there are lots of ways where we use JIP matrix as control objects, where we take the information out of a matrix, and we can do things like, uh, especially in 3D, we could do things like tell what the scale of multiple different uh, OBJ files are, and it's all stored in a matrix. And like playing with JIT op allows us to like uh, scale the values of that. Um, I'm not explaining it very well, but for the meantime. Just like play around with this, uh, compare two images, see if you have any mixing effects you like, and that's just another tool to add to your toolkit.